What's going on viewing the generate? So in today's video, I'm going to be covering whether or not your teeth should be touching when you're mewing. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the video. The first thing you have to understand is that when we say that the teeth should be touching, the technical term is actually the butterfly bites, right? And this was referred by Mike Mew and John Mew. And um, it is just a butterfly bite. As the name implies, it means just lightly resting your teeth together. Now, I get a lot of questions. Patrick, when I do this, I start clenching my jaw because you guys are unable to control your own fucking jaw. So I'm going to have to dive into whether you have to do it, should you do it, and how you can actually address the teeth in contact part. So as I previously mentioned, you guys are incapable of even clenching and controlling your own face. But the important thing, I'm going to state facts first, okay? I'm going to dive into the facts. The fact is this. So there are some clips, especially one clip in particular. I'm going to try to find this and put a put a link to it in the description. I remember finding this clip and he said I it was either John Mew, I think it was John Mew or Mike Mew. They said that having the teeth in contact could may very well be the cause for a facial upswing. He says that essentially having the teeth in contact might be a very vital part of mewing. It basically applies pressure constantly on the palate because if your teeth are in contact, lights lay in contact, that means there's an equal and opposite reaction. So there's an equal force light and equal force upwards onto the palate, which should and they think could um, promote facial upswing and forward growth. And the problem of uh, when you keep your teeth in contact with the butterfly bites and actually clenching, this is quite common, right? Because your muscle is kind of on and off. It's not like midway through, right? It's either on or it's off. You can put a bit of pressure, but most likely if you put a tiny bit of pressure, your jaw is gonna to wanna to put more pressure there, right? So this is what I would recommend. If you are unable to hold the butterfly bite, so teeth in very light contact, and it's, I'm talking about the molars, right? The molars and the premolars. If you can keep them in very light contact without clenching, then keep your teeth slightly apart, about a millimeter or two, okay? So now, if ideally, you would want to have your teeth in, in light contact, the butterfly bites, but if you can't prevent yourself from clenching your jaw somehow, you don't have control over your own face, then I would say keep your teeth very slightly apart. But you have to be careful because if you keep them too far apart, then you're not going to get you're not going to reap the full benefits of mewing. OK, so I would say one to two millimeters max. And that is if you're not able to keep the butterfly bites. And now one reason why you might not be able to keep the butterfly bite might just be a might just be a malocclusion thing. You might have crooked teeth. You might have a overbite, an underbite. So it might make keeping your teeth in contact a lot more difficult. So a lot of times the people that can't keep their teeth together, it's usually due to a malocclusion, right? So overbite to underbite or crooked teeth simply. But it is important that if you don't do the butterfly bites, right? Just keep your teeth one to two millimeters away. You don't want to do more than that because the further away you go, the less you're able to apply the tongue on the, on the roof of the mouth. Because if your mouth is open like this, right? Your tongue has more room to go up. So you're not able to properly apply the back. If the palate is lower, you're more able to apply the back third of the tongue. It's better to be safe and not to cause clenching. So if you see that while you're doing the butterfly bites, you might be putting more pressure than you should. Because again, butterfly bites, very lightly in contact, no pressure at all. If you're not able to keep this without clenching your jaw, then I would say do not opt for it. Instead, keep a one to two millimeter distance between your teeth. But again, you don't want your teeth to be too far apart because it is going to significantly reduce your mewing results and your ability to push the tongue on the roof of the mouth. So I hope that answers your question because this is a question that I get a lot. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't. In the description is a link to Telegram chats for the mewing community. It's called the Mewing Squad. Join us. And there's also my Instagram so you guys can send me any questions. And if you want, guys want private coaching mewing sessions, then just DM me on Instagram. I only take a limited amount of people and I don't take everyone. It only depends if I think you have genuine potential. See you guys in the next one. Peace.